Okay. Watch out, welcome back. Okay, now no need for a big windy intro today on this one. We're going to crack on with some of this work on the front screen on the project today. I've just got to cut the hole for the headlight now. This is a bit of a moment of truth. Um, get it right or I can get it wrong. And so I've got 50% chance of success, haven't I? Let's get stuck in, I'll show you what we're up to. Right, so here's the task at hand. Um, to mount the light on the front of this in a way that looks half decent. I don't want a big obvious light on the front, that would just be a bit crap really, a bit obvious, and I want this to be unique. Um, we've scored an amazing win with this great shape, the fact that it organically fits with the lines of the bike and it's just fantastic. And of course, being that it's a Harley Sports, the tank that I've used, that's just cool as well. So I don't want to spoil all that, I've kind of got this far, I've done this, I've made this as cool as it is, I don't want to bugger it up by just putting a big daft, ugly looking headlight on the front, because that would just then look so much like a regular off-the-shelf fair, and it's not worth it. I might as well just bought one and fitted it. Um, so I want to do something unique and unusual, and I think I've talked a few times about Frenching a light. If you don't know what it means, the easiest thing to do is Google Images and put Frenching a light, or a Frenched light, and it's just sinking it down inside a hole, really. It's a little bit of sheet metal work involved. It looks quite cool when it's done. And it's an old hot rod trick from the 50s. It's really, really cool. I love it. It's kind of lead sleds, that sort of thing. You used to put their rear lights inside a little tube, so you see them just shining out of a tube. It's great. And I'm going to do that down here. I've decided on the light. A few of you said a few things. Um, one of you, one or two of you said a really cool thing of a, an endurance racer style single headlight to one side and then a little light just above for main beam. So that's quite cool. I like that, but it's, I don't want to go there with this. I think that's okay on the front of a full fairing but not on just a screen. It looks a little bit, you know, odd. Um, also, you see some of the flat tracker style bikes are being done with a flat number board and a light to one side. So I don't want to do anything else that anybody else is doing. I ain't copying anyone. I like setting trends. I don't like following them. Um, so I'm going to go with this. Now, a few of you might scream fail, you know, because that is a really off the shelf kind of light. It's the sort of thing that you can buy for your chopper kind of custom bike. But they are cool. It is cast alloy. It's heavy, it's solid, it's beef. Um, it's got a glass front, not plastic, which is definitely a glass run on that. So it's a proper beefy light. And also two halogen bulbs in, and it's a proper legal headlight. So it's a dip and main headlight. It's got the three uh, spades on the back. You just plug it into your normal headlight wiring, which I've just expressed out there. So that will just plug in and work as a regular straightforward headlight. So I kind of like that, and it's really small and neat. And it's going to go down here, right down at the bottom, as low as possible, preferably on the curb itself. So it's almost invisible. And it will sit down inside a little kind of slot anyway. You won't see it on the front. I may even cover it in the daytime. And I know a load of you will probably ask about that or mention it. You can't cover it up. You can cover it up in the daytime. Um, it's not a problem. Don't know. But anyway, I've got to cut a hole in this where that is. There's a bracket that this fits to that's already in there. I've got to find out where this fits. I've got to, you know, if I could see through it, it'd be fantastic. I could just cut the hole exactly where that is behind, but I'm kind of going in blind. I don't know where it is. So there's the task today. I'm not going to, I haven't got the usual five or six hours today. I've only got three hours to do this um, in this particular little installment. So I'm going to dedicate that three hours to just cutting that hole. I think that's it with projects sometimes. If you take your time, don't rush, be patient cut jobs down into little pieces and do them a piece at a time, then you never, you never see the enormity of a project ahead of you. That's something that will cause you to abandon a project in a heartbeat when you see how much you've got to go. I know, I mean, if I care to look, I've probably got another 60, 70 videos for all I know. If I knew that and it was fact, I probably would lose interest because it's just such a long time. However, each little job is a separate project on its own. Break it down into bite-sized pieces and it's easy. So today, all I'm gonna do is cut that hole in there, ever so easy. Let's get it off, put it on the bench, and I'll see, I'll show you what I mean. I'll just show you this before I do that. Hang on, look. Let's grab you. Have a look inside here. You can kind of see that this bracket there, that's the bracket for the light. That's what it mounts to. So let's hold you steady. The light's going to be kind of there. Looking at it, about there. So as you can see, the hole has got to be 
almost right down at the bottom. And all that will be intact as one smooth front with the light right down low. Two hours, fast forward, two hours that was, just faffing around. In the end, couldn't really see the pencil on the metal, I didn't want to scratch it with a scribe because it might be in the wrong place. That sits square and neat, level, symmetrical, laterally correct, up and down to the eye, which is how it's going to get judged when it's done. It's right. You can't measure anything because there's nothing square, there's nothing square, nothing flat. and even that cut there is not symmetrical. Where I folded that lip in, there's one and a half mil more meat that side than there is that side. So it's kind of, if you measure from there to there, it's cockeyed and it'll, get, it'll end up to one side. So you've just got to eyeball it in the end. Nature's great spirit level. Right, and what I would love to do, and I seriously love to do, is be able to cut that out, to put a little drill hole in, a tiny little one, and thread a fret saw through and just fret saw that out so that I've got it because look at the shape of it. It's kind of every ellipse in it. You've got an ellipse that way and that way. So I could literally have it as a little door and <laughs> put it on a hinge. But you know, you can't because to cut that out, I've got a kind of trial and error. I'm not going to cut perfectly, put it on the bike and find it's cockeyed. I don't want to do that. It's a greater importance to get the hole symmetrical, correct and level, although that looks okay, you know the rules, measure twice, cut once. I'm kind of going to cut inside it, so chain drill round, and then cut inside it, and then I can finesse out to the exact extremity, and, it, and then I can get it exact with the file, which means destroying that, which is a real shame, because that would have made a cool door. don't know. We wake it up as we go. Right. Cut it out.
Oops. Right, so I don't think that's where it sits. I don't think that's bad. That's the initial cut. So the outline that's still drawn there is in the right place. And the great thing is this whole affair is movable. This can all move about. The brackets are all on slots, the whole thing. But what I need is to make sure that everything sits symmetrical. And it does. Right, a long way to go yet. I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger and a little bit less, a bit less lethal. <laughs> Okay, there we are. Um, believe it or not, three, three hours. It's incredible how long this stuff takes. Um, you close up, look. There we are. Now, what was that side's easier? What was easiest? What? Let me start that again. What was important was getting that hole correct in so many ways. Um, physically correct in the sense of side to side, up to down, rotational, at the right height, and so on. So it catches the light and you're measuring on a double ellipse that way and that way. Not the easiest thing, you know, and it would have been such a shame if I could, it would have been so cool and it is such a shame that that piece couldn't have been cut out as a fitting cover. And I could have made a little kind of inner retracting cover that could have come down, but getting that ellipse on a piece of metal of that size, honestly, I'm, going now. I'm not interested. I'm gonna do a French hole. Um, so now I've got to fill that, I've got to get the, the collar on the inside, but you, before you can do that, before you can make that half worth looking at, you've got to get that right. The hole that it, the French tube goes in has to be right first. Um, and also, like with all holes, you can't undrill a hole, you can't uncut a hole. You get one chance to get it right. And a few of you have asked for these, have you got a link to it, I'd like to get one, but honestly, there isn't any. I couldn't find any in the UK. I just came from Germany and it, I bought it from a guy just so that those of you kind of s stop asking and I mean that respectfully, you know, so that you're all satisfied and know. You can't buy them in the UK. I couldn't find any anywhere uh, unless you can prove otherwise. Uh, it's a Sportster, Harley Sportster King Tank blank. That's what it was. You know that at the beginning. And the guy I had it, he bought it for a chopper project. He didn't use it so he stuck it on eBay to get rid of it. So it's second hand in that sense. You can get it from the USA so log on, get them, and you just have to pay the import. And they're a lot of money. But, you know, second-hand Harley tank will just do the job. I'd have had to weld up the cap, which would have been there, and that would never have been as flat and smooth as that. Anyway, that's enough old waffle. I want to show you what it looks like on the bike. Let's get it bolted on, show you me. Let's 
Let's give it a look. Now oh, there we go. Now I'm glad to say I've got the hole bang on in the right place. Um, this whole thing's on slots. All the, the brackets, I've all got slots in, the brackets themselves are mounted on slots, so the whole thing moves around, but there is a point where here and here and at the top and everything that it is symmetrical to the bike, you know, same gap, same gap, same gap, same gap. And everything works nice and sits square. That's, oh, I, that's why I put slots in there. And then when it's all like that, that's now in the bang on right place. So there it is. Absolutely chuffed with that. All I've got to do now is put like a steel liner around the inside, like a, I don't know, two and a half, three inches to reach. That's about one inch to touch the glass there, two inches at the top because this chamfers upwards. So that's the next task. This has been three hours just to cut that hole. Can't uncut a hole. If it's cut in the wrong place with this curvature, there's no way I could weld the hole up and get it right again. Not in a million years. So it was important to get that right. And taking the time is what it's about, treating it as one set project. I'm done now, that's it for the day. I'm gonna go and get this uploaded and edited and all that. I love it. Looks the biz. And the best view, the absolute best view, is when you can't see the light. Whoops. So from here, where are we? There's the light. So as soon as you come to this point, you can't see the headlight at all. And that's the look I wanted to achieve. I wanted to keep it as kind of xenomorph as I possibly can, you know, some of that sort of alien head thing. I wanted to keep it looking that way and bung in a good big headlight in the middle, that was just trashed it. The look would have been lost forever and it would have just been just any other front cowling. But that's cool, I like that. Very pleased with that. And with the collar in the inside welded in, that's gonna look the business. I'm gonna use the MIG for that because it's a lot more forgiving and it doesn't um, warp anything. It's going to tack it on the inside and then fill all the little holes, but that's the next one. That will be the next episode. Tools away. Oops. Little drawer, baby. Okay, um, switch it on. Right, there you are. All right, that's it for now, I'm gonna call that done. Three hours in the garage for this one. Normally do about five, five and a half, but I haven't got that long today, I've got some other stuff to do, and it will give you a chance to get this edited. As you've noticed, by the time you get to this point in the video, I've been using one of the GoPros, Chris, which is watching us now, uh, just to kind of give a third element to it you know I want to do something a bit different we are trying to make something of this channel we're trying to move forward to invent new ways to do things to keep it interesting for you that's the most important thing and I see things done by other garage or other other video makers and I like what they do and I have a little go at it uh, and, and hopefully it brings the variety to the channel that you enjoy pretty much like riding with the cameras on the bike so I'm going to be fitting that in nothing in here will diminish um, ne next up we've got simple skills in the week and I'll do a ride video so during the course of the week this is Saturday now during the course of the next coming week there'll be two videos up uh, uh, simple skills first and then depending on the weather or which bike we use but one way or the other I want to take you to zigzag hill my favorite bit of swervery and show you what that's like that is really really good fun um, so that will be two coming this week just that variety hoping to keep it interesting watchable so that you keep coming back. There are big names out there. I watched somebody the other day who is absolutely massive on the internet saying that, you know, he's kind of run out of things to do. These channels are a little bit samey and, you know, he used to be an individual that never showed himself. He's only just started showing his face and showing who he is and he's, he's you know, thrashing around trying to find something new. Vlogging itself as a thing is just white noise. Everybody's doing it. Your channel must have something new. You must bring something to the internet that people want to tune in and watch something that nobody else does. And if you can't think of that, then make what you do do the best out there because now that the internet's big, now that YouTube is colossal and massive and there's millions of us doing it, you really got to shout loud to be noticed and hopefully, with the quality and the style of what we do, we're shouting a little bit louder than the rest and you are still watching. So thank you for all your support. Um, like I said, four inch grinder, simple skills on that. You've been asking for that, that's coming up.
yeah, Tuesday, I reckon, I'll do that. Um, wheels, what wheels to use, some basic safety stuff with it, and some, how, some do's and don'ts, so that's pretty cool, and I said it'll ride video later on, and we are up to three and a half hours today. Oh God, we're in the 70s almost by now. So there we are, I'll leave you with the wall of friends, show you what we're up to for now. So we've got three, four more, we've actually turned the final corner, we're coming down this wall now, so if you've got a plate, and you're somewhere in the world that is allowed to send plates to us, Indian subcontinent, Far East, I love it, get them over here. Give us a shout on the comments and I'll give you the details. Penny will find you the relevant postal address and you can get your plate on the wall, which is great. So I'll leave you the wall of friends, I'll shut up. That's pretty cool. Take easy ride safe, I'll see you next time. <laughs> That's a wrap.